Yeah, so I want to talk about fruit trees and uh, it's very important for everyone to understand that fruit trees are very different from vegetables and uh, let's go through the list of what makes them so different. The first thing is that they're elevation specific and this accounts for um, when you're developing a fruit forest or a new, a new uh, piece of property or a backyard garden you want to plant that fruit tree only once. So you need to have the height of the soil um, level with the top of the uh, fruit tree. So you need to know that ele elevation of where that fruit tree is gonna go. So let's say you are starting your own backyard garden and you wanna start off with uh, 10 fruit trees. You establish where they go, you pick the spots, you basically um, understand that you can't move them again, so they're considered permanent investments. A permanent location is where they end up. I recommend not putting the fruit trees really close, the same varieties really close together, so they have a chance of fighting off uh, pest and disease. Put them in the yard, but have them further apart from each other. Buy them in, um, pairs of you know pairs or triplets or so they can pollinate correctly ask for help with that is if they need uh, uh, another plant to pollinate or not so once you get past the stage of buying these uh, diverse fruit trees and you place them in your yard correctly now you can start with the hardscaping you can start with the uh, vegetable gardens so if you consider the fruit trees first as your skeleton. If you consider your fruit trees as the skeleton of your garden, you're ahead of the game. And if you have, let's say, $500, I would put everything into fruit trees. I would not start a vegetable garden. I would get the skeleton and the setup of those fruit trees ready first. We made that mistake here. We didn't focus on the fruit trees right away, and I regret that. The fruit trees would have uh, paid more dividends already if we would have focused on fruit trees first. The problem we had is we had, didn't have the uh, elevations or the grades established. We were doing a lot of hardscaping work. So it was really hard to uh, plant uh, these fruit trees permanently. So you start off your garden, you're saying, hey, look, I'm investing in fruit trees. I'm going to look after them, I'm going to water them, I'm going to make sure that the diseases don't get to them. I'm going to wash them down with soapy water if they show any fizzle or fuzziness on them. I'm going to research what I can do to protect my fruit trees. So you're putting a lot of energy in those fruit trees. Now what happens is, let's say you're four years in, and your mulberries give you 2.8 kilograms of uh, mulberries. Your tomato tree gives you 62 of these guys. Your um, alpine kern gives you four bowls. Your gooseberries give you six bowls. You can see the math there is that these investments that you've done three years ago pay dividends quite quickly. And they add additional um, flavor to your, your harvest because you're not just getting, you know, cucumbers and tomatoes and, and broccoli. And you have this next layer of something that's, you know, high in sugar, high in energy. You can juice this. You can cook with it. So what happens is uh, <clears throat> these fruit trees are the most important investment in your food forest or your backyard garden because they contribute a different layer of, of produce and um, if you treat them well they will do that exponentially in the next 10 years they will give you more and more and more produce to a point where you might not even be able to keep up with it so if you are going to uh, build yourself a garden let's call it building you should really say, okay, I'm going to create the skeleton first. I'm going to have a pear tree here. 
I'm gonna have a, uh, a an orange tree over here, a lemon here, another one over there. So I'm spacing them out so they don't get attacked so easily. Then I'm going to look after them. I'm going to water them first. Before I water anything, I'm going to water the fruit trees first. So then I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to have gooseberries underneath the pear tree. I'm going to have uh, um, rhubarb over here underneath this tree. I'm going to plant a fruit tree that likes wet feet next to the, uh, the, the area where the water sits all the time. I'm going to do my research. I'm going to be knowledgeable about fruit trees. I'm going to know what they need. I'm going to know what they want to do. I'm going to know how quickly they're going to produce food for me. With fruit trees, information is king. Information will help you out a lot getting from A to B. But there's no way to, uh, to understand fruit trees better than by planting them. And uh, once you get them going, it seems they drag the rest of the garden with them. They have this... Um, problem of being sugar rich and that sugar richness is an is a separate type of energy that most other vegetables don't have it attracts bugs it attracts insects it attracts disease viruses there is a saying that everything wants to eat a chicken well everything wants to eat your fruit tree as well so you have to be very aware that they're very sensitive to the uh, the attacks of everything around them but <clears throat> the biggest secret to fruit trees if you can keep them healthy not much can get to them it's when your fruit trees start to struggle that uh, they start to get eaten up alive so if you can pay attention to keeping your fruit trees healthy you won't have many problems with them if you have a great big orchard with rows of the same tree you're going to be you know battling them with uh, industrial chemicals because it's just so vulnerable to uh, you know big flocks of something coming in and attacking them so again if you're gonna start a food forest number one start with your fruit trees number two look after them beyond anything else in your garden pay attention to them make sure they're always well fed they've got wet feet uh, when they need it keep looking after them keep making them uh, happy cover their their bases with uh, smaller fruit shrubs. Make sure the sun doesn't get at them at the bottom. Um, there's lots of ways to make your fruit trees grow really quickly. I made a video discussing this, uh, this problem of fruit trees, what I call just sitting there. They basically, uh, they do very little for no, un for no known reason. They just sit there. Don't give up on them, water them, make sure they're okay. And then all of a sudden they grow one meter in one year. So it's very interesting how these fruit trees have a little bit of a different uh, fussiness. They're very fussy, you have to be very careful with them. So what I'm getting at is uh, pay attention to them, look after them, buy them, plant them correctly, make sure they have enough food for 10 years, make a bigger hole, there's lots of videos on how to plant a fruit tree. Make sure they get the right location. If they're questionable, make sure they have a, a, a protection, a wall behind them, whatever it may be. Make sure they're wind protected. And uh, your fruit trees are like uh, certain investments in life, probably the best investment you can make. They will provide you with that additional layer of produce that you don't have if you're only growing vegetables. And there's nothing better than having a, uh, a uh, container full of cherries or peaches or oranges or lemons or apples. There's, there's absolutely no better feeling than harvesting your own fruits. And, and especially if they're um, plentiful and the investment goes into the years ahead. What I mean by that is like year seven, you have a really good peach crop um it goes quickly people are very intimidated you know it's like it's a long-term investment you know there's so many dwarf varieties that are ready in three four years there's uh the waiting period has definitely gotten a lot shorter with these fruit trees it's probably for a food forest or a backyard gardener the absolute best investment i would also be very cautious of uh um, 
not having them in your garden, they are layer number one. They could be the highest layer you have in your backyard garden, providing shade for understory plants. If you fill them up with plants that uh, cover and protect their roots from overheating, you will find that they will grow quicker. Um, there's lots of possibility with fruit trees as well. And also I would really recommend a diverse selection of fruit trees, as many as you can afford at the beginning. Um, pay attention to them, let them thrive, build your garden around them. So if they're the uh, specimen plants in your garden, make sure that you get enough of them, make sure that they cover a lot of your land, make sure they're in the right location, you do not want to move them, and uh, make sure that you um, actually enjoy the fruit. Do not plant fruit trees that you're not going to eat. Like there's uh, many, many fruit trees that people plant and they never touch them. Quince and all kinds of other weird plants. Crab apples and pick the fruit trees that you enjoy eating, like peaches or whatever it may be, whatever your favorite fruit trees are. Invest in them in such a way that you know that, hey, look, in five years, they're going to be prolific and five years they're going to add an additional source of uh, food to me for me and it's going to make a big difference if you plant fruit trees.